So, first of all, um, I think it's safe to say that most libertarians have a worse track record of voting than most college students or whatever that we keep getting called out for. So more importantly than money, I would say, is first libertarians and Republicans <laughs> actually leading by example and talking with their mouths. Um, because without that, all the money isn't gonna go anywhere. Now my question for you is with our current economic issues, um, we would probably like to see you follow up on some of these issues with the gold standard and with price fixes and subsidies. These would all be very good things. But something we've talked about at the conference a lot is how powerful the executive has become today. More powerful than it was ever supposed to be. So how would you reconcile the changes you need to make to make this a more free society with the actual defined role of the executive today? Well, I'm not quite sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I didn't get all the words and I didn't quite get that, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, in, our, in the conference this weekend, we've talked about how powerful the executive has become. The executive, oh, okay. Yes, and how would you basically reconcile wanting to make these changes for a freer society with the actually very limited role the executive was supposed to have in the Constitution. Oh, okay, well, you know, that, that goes back to my point that nothing happens unless you change the prevailing opinion of the people. And uh, if, if, the, if the people still want us to want to run a welfare state and a welfare state, nothing happens even if you have one new president. So you have to, you have to get a consensus. And, uh, but, but when the people speak out and they want it, then the Congress will, will res respect, reflect on that. But uh, th there's a lot of difficulties ahead because, uh, you know, everybody admires a strong president. I don't think anybody wants a weak president. Even I wouldn't want to be a weak president, but I want to use my strength to do the right things. Like, resist the temptation to regulate your life and resist the temptation to think I know how to run the economy and resist the temptation of seeking power to run the world. That's what you should use your strength for. But we have a long way to go to that point to get the American people to understand that fully. So would you say then, Dr. Paul, that uh, um, along with your reputation as being Dr. No, that, that basically you would use your veto power to its uh, a logical conclusion? Yeah, I think that would be uh, assumed, yes. Uh, <laughs> and I, I think it would be also assumed that I would uh, recognize the responsibility of the Congress, and uh, even though these, these laws that they're sending, I would never use signing statements, and, uh, and that means it should be vetoed. And, and not have signing statements. I wouldn't use executive orders, but I'm really working hard because I'm pretty well convinced that, you know, I might want, not want to legislate with uh, executive orders, but maybe we could repeal all the executive orders we don't like. <laughs> I'd like to just say one thing to everyone here. Our first task is to get you nominated. But once you're nominated, we have to be sure that the Republican Party does not do to you what they did to Goldwater. That was they did not mount a campaign for him. You're, uh, you're our immediate hope for the future, and we wish you well. I think the, uh, <clears throat> I think the assumption has to be made that you can't depend on the uh, organized Republican Party to come to our rescue. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I recognize that just running as uh, for a con congressional seat, uh, because not only did they not help, but they worked very hard to keep me from getting back into Congress. So, no, I think that should go without saying, which means that you have to have alternative ways of, uh, of campaigning and raising money and compensating. But that's what it's available to us this time around. Uh, which has not been available before. Even today, it's much more available. The internet and, and, and the activity on, on the web pages and all, much greater than it was just two, three years ago. So uh, uh, this can compensate for the lack of support by the official party. But uh, no, that uh, is a real problem too. Uh, uh, since you are brought up about the uh, uh, Paul Wolfowitz, so what's your position on the 
uh, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. <laughs> I don't know whether that would be the first day or the second day we get rid of those. <laughs> Actually, I'll have to qualify that. We, we wouldn't get rid of them because we might not have the entire authority because other countries are involved. We would just get the United States out of it and no more tax dollars going to them. <laughs> Congressman, um, one thing you can depend on the Republican Party to do, and I used to be part of that machine, um, will be to smear you when they think you're gaining too much traction and you're making them too uncomfortable and forcing them to talk about the issues that you know need to be talked about. And um, I just want you to, to address that because you know the Carl Roves and the people of this world, as soon as your numbers start going up and you distract them, they're going to want to distract you. So I'd like you to address that. Well. My first way of addressing that is that I have already warned my wife because she is getting excited about campaigning and, is, and actually likes uh, campaigning and is enjoying it uh, very much. But I told her, you better be prepared. <laughs> no, you have to be prepared because if, if we do continue to, to grow and in strength and have an impact, uh, yes. Uh, I don't know exactly how you handle each incident because it turned out that uh, on the night of that debate in South Carolina, uh, I thought the whole thing was over. I mean, you can't imagine uh, how lonely of a feeling that is when you think the entire country is opposed to you and that you just, you know, just blew the whole thing. But it was only 10 minutes later that my staff came and told me that, hey, you're winning in the polls. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll handle it the best way we can as we uh, meet the problems. 